What's going on, Kyle? Fear we're gonna give it a minute for a couple people to pop in, but uh, we're <laughs> we were a little worried, you know, because I haven't done a live stream in a long time. So it's uh, I said I was gonna give a few minutes for some people to pop in, and then uh, one hour later. <laughs> but um, in any event, how's everybody doing, man? We got tons of people popping in here, so that is that is awesome. Thank you very much. We got zero stats updating on the live stream, but, you know, it is what it is. Holy crap, 221 people. I thought I'd just pump, pop pop in here and say hi. Yes, it has been a long time since I've done a live. Guys, I've been, like, super busy. I'm back in school trying to get another degree, running the business, and, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on in the housing market, but, uh, you know, there's been some 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 tough times in the septic business right now, so I uh, just just really haven't had time to focus on social media. But I figured I'd jump on here and tell some stories. But first, like holy crap, in the chat window, it just keeps scrolling. So uh, yes, we're live streaming, and ah, uh, <laughs> Robert Swain says learning to read. You know, I never figured out how to read, which. You know, it's like always hold the book upside down and stuff like that. It's, I get caught so much being illiterate, but that's what you get being from North Carolina. So uh, somebody else wants to know who's winning the state license race, uh, me or my brother. Right now we're tied. So that's going to be uh, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm going for the ultimate win. Right. Like I'm going to try to get a degree in engineering. I'm not sure I'm smart enough for the math. Um, and uh get a professional engineer stamp. And I think that will win. Like, like, I don't think anybody can go beyond that. But, um, you know, like I said, I'm back in school. I'm really bad at math. Like you guys have no idea how bad at math I am. Um, I think that my math professor is convinced I'm special needs at this point because I just keep asking the dumb questions. Um, in any event, glad you guys are here. Happy to see you. Um, had a couple of stories to tell you from real life and actually these things like really happened and so I wanted to jump on here and like tell you guys because holy crap um I've had my socks blown off um a lot and William Cox says math is a language like any other it just takes practice to keep it up that's true I know that but uh me no habla math all right so I'm working on it so, uh, hello from Denmark just takes time, you know, two plus two's always been challenging for me, but I never really had a problem with like 1.75 and 2.25, you know, adding up to be the same thing. Ah, <sighs> in any event, um, one of my, uh, dear, dear friends, uh, got himself a girlfriend about nine months ago and nine months to anybody that's hearing a story about a relationship, that's a significant thing. Like, you know what's happening at that point. So nine months ago, they got into a relationship and now they're getting married. We can, we, we can all play that out. Nothing bad, okay? Hey, listen, I did the same thing, okay? But it's math that we all recognize. And uh, I have never gotten to meet this young lady. You know, this is a pretty good friend of mine. Like, I know his family, you know, I met his mom, his mom, his dad, you know, the whole deal, right? Never got to meet this young lady. And and I don't know if that was like by design or not, but okay. And um, so they recently found out that they were, you know, pregnant or she was pregnant. They were having a baby and, uh, you know, all this good news and still never got to meet her. And 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 now they're getting married, okay, like... And, you know, like, hopefully I'm invited to the, to the, to the wedding, but, um, we went out for like a guy's night out, right? We go to the pool hall and we're playing pool and we're having fun and <laughs> bada boom, bada bing, he gets a phone call from her. Now it's kind of loud in the pool hall. So he puts the phone on speakerphone and turns the volume all the way up and it's her on the phone and she's like, Hey honey, um, uh, you know, I've got a question that I'm, I'm sure you can answer. You're so smart. I'm making you a recipe and I'm sure you're just going to like it, but it says that I need a teaspoon of sugar. We're all like, yeah. 
She's like, all I've got is a quarter teaspoon spoon. How many quarter teaspoons make a teaspoon? And my brain just stops. Like, I am looking at him like, bro, are you serious? And he answers this question just off the top of his head. He's just like, well, honey, I'm pretty sure it's four. And again, my brain is exploding. Like, I'm dying on the inside. And I'm like, what do you mean, pretty sure? Pretty sure? Is this negotiable? Like, mm, has something changed? Has the laws of the universe, like, quarter has a new meeting? Like, is quarter now 0.18? Okay, did, some, did I not get told? Gonna need six of those. In any event, ah. Oh. She was like, oh, thank you so much. Blah, 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 blah. You're so smart. Dude, we're all staring at him, okay? They do their little like, love you, kissy face, kissy face, bye-bye. And I'm like, oh my God, you guys have been dating for so long and you're still doing the kissy face, kissy face? Whew, okay, but, but if you're happy, right? He gets off the phone and looks around. Everybody in our party is just like, the people from the next pool table over are looking at him. They've stopped their game. Okay, and they're looking at him, and a guy from across the table, okay, yells over there, bro, that was a fucking joke, right? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if he's happy with her, I'm happy. But I'm going to do something, right? There's a wedding coming up, and she's getting a present. It's probably going to be a fucking math book, all right? And maybe I'll give them a complete set of measuring spoons, like, so that this doesn't happen again. But, like, I'm not alone in this. Like, can you guys let me know? Like, do most of you know that it takes four quarter teaspoons to make a teaspoon? In any event, it is what it is. Um, he might not be there with, uh, he might not be there with the smartest, smartest cat in the room, but she is definitely the nicest cat in the room. She sounded so sweet on the phone. So in any event, somebody says, get her a metric set of measuring spoons <laughs> or going right out of Europe. Uh, I don't think the metric system is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think I don't think the metric system is a problem. You're going to need one cc of sugar. Um, Austin Kane says, yeah, she was raised in the mountains. You, you know? <laughs> it, it, no, that's not an excuse, because people here in the mountains can cook. So, in any event, uh, Melanie Randolph says, thumbs up on the measuring spoon gift. Yeah... I thought it was a good idea. Thank you for confirming that. Um, <laughs> get <her. laughs> Slightly embittered product says get her a math book and tell her it's for the baby. <laughs> oh my God, that's great. Um, and John O. Master says, yeah, but mountain people cook with feelings, not with math. That is true. People cook your heart with the river lens. Oh, geez. So, all right, so, um, by the way, if you guys want to, any questions you want to ask or something you want to know, um, uh, just hit me up in the comments or whatnot. I'm trying to read them. Um, uh, Robert Swine says that he knew a girl in, from, from his high school that went to college and needed instructions on how to cook ramen. Whoo. Well, I, I mean, hey, listen, there's a first time for everything, right? But uh, have any of you guys heard of these uh, home warranty companies? Whenever you buy a house, they offer you like a home warranty and all that stuff. So we got a home warranty company that, that called us up and asked us if we were willing to do service for them. And I listened to like their business model and all this. And I thought, you know, um, 
<laughs> Matthew Grisby says ramen doodle noodles do be hard though. <laughs> um, in any event, so decided to do some some service with them, and I gotta say I'm probably gonna stop doing business with these home warranty companies. I don't know if you guys know this, right? But what they do is they take these people's money. You know, it's a either a subscription or a flat fee, and these people you know pay them. And then whenever something in the house breaks, like a faucet or some plumbing or something like that, they will, uh, sorry, the home warranty company will pay a contractor like myself to come out and fix the problem. The problem is, is these home warranty companies, they want the thing done for no money, okay? Like, they'll pay $125 service call fee, but the part that they want you to install is like the cheapest plastic, like, whatever faucet you could get at Walmart, okay? Like Home Depot builder grade. Can you order their replacement part from wish.com, okay? Like what faucet comes from Alibaba, all right? Like it's kind of horrible and I don't like doing work like that. So, excuse me, I've been scaling back on doing work um, and with them. <clears throat> And in doing that, whenever they call up, whenever they call up, we just let the home warranty company know like, hey, listen guys, we're, we're full. We're a little booked. Can't really, um, you know, handle this call. And so they end up calling their customers and say, oh, well, you know, our local plumber can't do it. So we get this phone call from this guy and we can't take his phone call because we're on the phone with other customers. And it goes to voicemail. And in the voicemail, he says something to the effect of, you all are a damn piece of shit, blah, 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 blah. He just cusses us out. And then he hangs up the phone. And I've thought to myself, I'm like, you know, people get really, really brave when they're on the other end of a phone, right? So just out of like a social experiment curiosity. I mean, we had his address from, from the ticket that they gave us. So I decided, what the hell? I go in, I update the ticket. I'm like, we'll take the call because I want to meet this guy. Like, listen, I want to know and meet and shake hands with somebody who is so brave that they would call up somebody that they don't even know and cuss them like a dog. Like this, this, I need some confidence like that, okay? So we we decided to take the call, but it's after business hours, so the home warranty company can't like call them and say we decided to do the call. So I drive my ass out there, okay? Now, one of three things is gonna happen, okay? Either one, I'm gonna get punched in the face, two, I'm gonna get shot, or three, he's gonna backpedal because he's, you know, lacks a spine. Okay, but so I drive out there and I knock on his door. And uh, he opens his door and says, can I help you? And I said, yes, you left me a voicemail. And I just wanted to follow up on that. And he said, I didn't leave you a voicemail. So I played the voicemail. And oddly enough, the voice on the voicemail sounded just like his voice. It was very weird because he just said he didn't leave me a voicemail. And the thing is, is I think he recognized his own voice when he heard it. And I was like, this is you, right? The look of just sheer, what the fuck, terror, how do I handle this situation? Because he's in a freaking house coat, like bathrobe, like, right? One belt loop away from weighing out. It, it's just a bad situation for him. In any event, and <clears throat> so we're standing there, and this is the point. Like, this is the point where he's got the choice, right? He can either punch me in the face, <clears throat> shoot me, or backpedal. And he, like every other keyboard phone warrior out there, backpedals, okay? And oh my goodness, blah, 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 blah. I was like, you, you do realize that when you, you know, yell at people on the phone, like customer service reps and things like that, that those are real people. And I just, he just never, I guess, realized that some dumb motherfucker like myself would show up at his door and be like, can I help you? Is something wrong? So, in any event, I go in, I look at his 
Leaky Faucet, okay? His faucet is leaky because he treats it like it's just rough as hell. Like, when he turned it on for me, he, like, slammed it up and slammed it down and slammed it up. And I'm like, no wonder it leaks, you know? So I called the home warranty company up, and I was like, um, I don't think you guys are going to cover this because it wasn't caused by, you know, like, the product wore out. It was caused by abuse, the le- I made this phone call directly in front of him. Like, I'm looking at him while I'm saying the words to the home warranty company. Like, I don't believe this is going to be covered, okay? The anger that, like, came forth. I mean, we're standing in his kitchen, okay? Like, this is his home. He's he's the master of his home, and I'm on the phone looking at him. Like, on the phone with the home warranty company. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't think it's going to be covered. Yeah, it's going to be abuse by the homeowner. Like, misuse and neglect, Okay, he just slams the thing open. Of course, it's broken. He is completely just aghast. And then I hang up the phone, smile, look at him, and go, is there anything else I can help you with? So uh, I might have been a little petty in that, and it probably wasn't worth the 90-minute drive to his house and back, but it gave me a small, small measure of just... Personal satisfaction. So, in any event. Let's read some comments. Hello, new guys, guitar. Interesting. Uh, They're betting nothing will break. The homeowner's betting something will. They don't make money, obviously. So, (laughs) somebody says, why don't we ever see the fifth wife? (laughs) Wait, I need two more? Because that would be, that would be five. Like, I mean, like, what do you want me to do? Like, they're not dogs at a dog and pony show. We're not going to, like, bring them through here, you know? (laughs) And the next contestant is wife number one. She wins a blue ribbon in cooking. Like, and behold, wife number two. Like, it's not like that, bro. Like, I I sort of, like, have this, like, online, you know, life. But I'm not going to subject, you know, them to it. And listen, they really have no desire to be on social media at all. But I mean, to to the person that's off camera, right? Like there are, aren't there? Uh-huh. Yeah, see? So oh my god. In any event, I walked out of the guy's house and at the door just to kind of like drive the point home that I'm a nice guy cuz I didn't want to come off as rude, right? Cuz I mean, he did call and cuss me, but I'm not going to like hold that against him, you know? I extended my hand and I was like, you know, it's been a pleasure working with you. If you have anything else, just give us a phone call. We'll be happy to help. And he shook my hand. Okay. Like, like the lack of just balls on this guy. Just I'm in his home in any event. Uh, And yes, we did get paid the $125 service call charge for going out there. So in any event, (laughs) Terry Jackson said, sorry, lost count. (laughs) Listen, I'm not trying to be a hoarder. I mean, you know, I just, I don't know. Um, In any event, guys, yeah, that, I I just, I probably shouldn't have done it. Like, it was, it was, it was probably a bad idea. Um, But, uh, like I said, the worst thing that happens is I get shot or punched in the face. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> uh scotty y says or respect for showing up at his front door yeah i mean maybe uh i just i don't understand people that cuss people on the phone like like service workers that are like doing their job so um <laughs> what would your three wives think if you got shot it's not like it hasn't happened before um They're used to me doing things like bail bonding. And, you know, I do other things that I don't talk about on here that are slightly dangerous. But, um, like, getting shot is just a possibility. Like, people do bail bonding. Always have that open. You know, people don't want to go back to jail. So, like, there's worse than homeowner Joe in his house coat, right? Like, you live in Franklin, North Carolina. What's the worst you're going to do? Bore me with a long drive. Um, So... In any event, um, somebody says, have I gotten any new licenses? No, I'm working on it. It's probably going to be 
several years before I get another one. But I'm in school for engineering. It's going to take me a long time. Um, and it's expensive. Like, fuck. I did not realize how expensive education is. Um, so. Uh, so somebody, somebody uh, asked a question. They said that they're buying a house and it's got roots in it. Um, and Here. actually, yeah. Uh, it says, uh, help, I'm currently in the process of buying a home and there are roots growing through it. Replace or repair? And the answer to that is replace, okay? Like, if you have a concrete tank and the roots are growing through it, it's not watertight anymore, the roots are going to break the concrete just like they're going to break um, the concrete on the sidewalk. Um, guys, this is not alcohol, okay? This is, this, is, this is seltzer. I see you guys talking about, like, what am I drinking and stuff like that. It's... it's literally carbonated water. The ingredients are water and bubbles. and bubbles. Okay. Like, you know, um, you know, it's not that I haven't realized that education is expensive. It's that, um, it's that what I'm getting in exchange for what I'm paying is not equal. Okay. For instance, I'm enrolled in a math class right now. It's an online math class. There are no lectures. I don't even know what my math teacher looks like. The first time I saw him was on a Zoom call one time 10 weeks into the course, okay? There's no lectures. It's it's basically online education post-COVID is just throw you to the wolves and hope you figure it out. Whenever I went to college, you paid a shit ton of money and you stood in front and a real life person like taught you and answered questions and had office hours and this new, uh, this, this, this new uh, education system is is trash okay it is absolute trash and the thing is is like listen i'm not some great videographer right but these instructors are bringing videos straight out of the 80s okay the quality is garbage and i'm not trying to throw ab tech under the bus i mean i kind of did when i just said their name but um you know they deserve it okay because the online education through them is trash and the thing is, is it's not just them. It's all across the state. I'm talking with people that are sending their kids to NC State and are saying that it, like online is a joke. I don't even know how these schools still have accreditation. So, um, uh, in any event. Got your selfie cam on or mirror, everything is backwards. I, I I don't know. This is my right hand and it's appearing on the right side of the screen to me. So I don't know what's going on. Um, no, my brother and I are tied right now. Um, and uh, Con Con says, no, you can wipe your ass with a diploma. That's not all. It's, well, no, not really, bud. Like, I, I want to get a professional engineer stamp. So I need a degree in engineering. Um, and then you get to charge ridiculous money. Um, so... In any event, it's not worthless, but the education quality that these universities are giving out is worthless. It is it is trash. Um, uh, in any event, um, I'm looking here. Uh, I'm looking at these comments. So, uh, Pure Blood 100 says. Wanted to ask, why do you run smaller pump trucks instead of three to 4,000 gallon trucks? Um, well, we're up here in the mountains, okay? And the mountains have mountains and tiny driveways. And it's a hell of a lot easier to get something on an F-550 frame up a narrow, steep-ass driveway than it is to get a big 3,000 gallon tanker truck. And on a narrow pass or a dirt road or whatever, it's just, it's just easier, it's safer, it's not as heavy. It does less damage to con to customers' concrete driveways and asphalt driveways and dirt roads. And, you know, it's just a better platform to run a smaller business on. But listen, if you were in Metro Charlotte where everything's flat and, uh, you know, all the streets are straight, uh, yeah, like run a big truck. But that's that's not, um, it's not our model. Scotty Y says, why have you backed off on videos? Oh, man, I haven't tried to back off on videos. I've been getting my ass kicked, okay? Like, 
we went through a period of the business where we almost like went out of business um, because business just went way down with this whole housing market economy, blah, 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 blah. And the, the, the uh, winters are slow. Like we're prepared for that because not a lot of people are doing stuff with their septic in the winter, but this time it just suck. Um, and, uh, like we, we had some, some like rough times, uh, but now business has picked up and we're starting to chuck away some money and life is good. But when, when the business is facing challenging times, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna jump on here and be like, har, 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 and do videos and waste time. Like you got to take care of the most important thing first. And that's actually running a business. There's a lot of people that depend on this business for a job and, I don't want to let them down. So the priority is the business and then school. I mean, how many hours a day have I been doing schoolwork? Like, <laughs> pretty much. So uh, to going back to the truck question, why don't we run bigger trucks? We also don't need CDL drivers if we run bigger trucks. I mean, I hire CDL drivers because I like the experience that they have, but I don't need them. Um, and uh, Scotty Y says he loved the shit missile. That's awesome. Uh, is there an update on the employee hoarder? Yes, there is. There's absolutely an update. And he's not a hoarder. He just didn't take out the trash, right? So there is an update on that. He's out of jail. Had a conversation with him while he was in, well, he was in prison. While he was in prison, he realized a lot of his own problems. And um, he got out of prison. And we got him a dumpster. And in less than half a day, he had that dumpster filled up. We got him another dumpster. In one day, he had the second dumpster filled up. We got him another dumpster. And the next day, he had that dumpster completely filled. Three Griffin roll-off dumpsters. He completely filled them up. The house has been cleaned out completely. It's amazing. So I think it took a total of four days, right? Like three and a half or something like that. He did an amazing job. So, I mean realistically that's that's pretty awesome so you know gonna try to get him on the right path again job you know place to live things like that so in any event you know but also like holding people to standards is is very very important so yeah you know rob rob says jesus that's insane yeah we were going through the house you should go look at that video it was crazy um but yes, uh, he is off to a good start. And like Darren Jackson said in the comments, yeah, jail will make you think, okay? So hopefully he will get his life together. And listen, I love the fact that you guys like know this and keep up with the stories. And, because honestly, it's um, like whenever I watch people online that, that I follow on social media, and there's a lot of people that I follow on social media, I get the feeling that I know them, right? And and I've never met the majority of the people I follow on social media, like Preston Stu, um, uh, that's on TikTok, um, or or a lot of the other TikTokers that I follow. I I don't, I've never met them, but I feel like I know them because I've I've listened to them for so long, um, and it's one of those things that if I saw them, like I'm I'm interested in their life, right, and. I really appreciate the fact that you guys are interested enough in, in what I'm saying and the stories that I tell that you actually like keep up with the stuff and remember it. It's, it's just, it's just amazing. So I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Um, uh, Harley Quinn shadow says, hi everyone. This is my first live. So hi, hello to you and welcome. Um, in any event, yeah, the employee that had the house that was filled with stuff, he is off to a great start. And I'm really, really excited for him. And listen, I'll tell more stories about that and keep you guys up to date. But um, <laughs> the worst hoarders episode. So I am, and this is a little bit difficult to get off the ground, but uh, I got invited to do uh, like a YouTube TV thing, like a show, uh, like a whole new channel on YouTube um, about hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. Uh, fighting, martial arts, self-defense, and stuff like that. Um, and and I'm not really sure why they invited me to 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 do this or why why, but uh, I think because I'm the smallest one, 
Like, I'm like 130 pounds, so I think that I'm going to, like, I think I'm going to be, like, perfect example of a, de- of, of a defenseless female. Okay? <laughs> like, like, I think that's what they had in mind. So, hopefully, God willing, in the next couple of weeks, um, they will, uh, we will start putting out episodes on a separate channel, um, and uh, it will be uh, martial arts... Uh, hand-to-hand combat, um, self-defense tactics, and stuff like that. And the idea of the show is basically we're going to troll the internet and find all these people that have the, you know, win any fight instantly, just do this, blah, 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 blah. And we're going to see, you know. And we're probably going to bring on Taylor and, uh, you know, have Taylor beat the crap out of me and see if these magical moves will save my life. Um so I've been in a whole bunch of fights. I'm used to being thrown around. Uh, I'm not scared about it. And um, uh, I can hold my own in a fight. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And if it takes off, it takes off. And um, and we'll see how it goes. So uh, somebody asked, am I a martial artist? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not a martial artist. I, I do like to fight, though. Like, I do enjoy, like a good, you know, sparring or fight or whatever, but let's not confuse that with martial arts, right? I'm not interested in points. I'm not interested, um, in, um, katas or, you know, forms or things like that. I am, I am interested in methods which produce massive trauma very, very quickly. And I'm moving through somebody. Okay. I'm not, I'm not into martial arts. Martial arts has rules and fights don't have rules. So why would I study something like don't confuse sport with fighting. It's not the same. Um, you know how you beat any judo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu guy ever when he beats you? Cause he will just tap. He'll let you go. Um, you know, the other thing is, is when they put you in an arm bar, take your other arm and start stabbing them in the groin because you know, you can, there's no rules in fighting. So don't confuse an art with real fighting. Um, yes, in any event, um, (laughs) I'm going to show you the guys, the best groin kicks. There you go. Right? Like option number one, all the time, kick them in the nuts. Okay. With malice in your heart. Um, in any event, uh, uh, in any event, you guys, uh, that show should be coming out. Like we're going to be recording the first episodes in one to two weeks and we'll see if you guys like it. I'll let you guys know, um, how that goes. Um, uh, and then the other thing is, is let me know what you guys think about this. I want to do a separate YouTube channel. Um, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but I want to, um, like go exploring like old abandoned dilapidated buildings and houses and things like that. And, um, there might be some questionable legality. Um, but I want to like go into places that nobody's been into for, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and just do like, uh, videos of, you know, what I find and, you know, looking at the inside of old buildings and stuff like that. And, um, and, uh, is that something that you guys would, would, you know, be interested in? You, You know, when you're driving through the country and you see that, abandoned building that's been there and it's about to fall down and uh you just drive past and you're like wow i wonder what's in there well i i want to just go and get a camera and go look inside you know because i'm sure they're all unlocked in any event um you know if that's something that you guys would be interested in seeing let me know uh, in the comments here. I know a couple people, uh, are saying yes. Um, uh, and this is the thing. Doc Jr. says, don't act like the clickbait, fake BS, fake ghost and sounds and shit. No, um, I'm not going to do that crap. Like, and those, those are clickbait ones and they get like a ton of views, but that's not, um, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, and Daniel Small says, would that be trespassing? And, just like your name, sir, that's a small problem. Um, 
I think to quote Captain Jack Sparrow, you're not in trouble till you get caught. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I either get punched in the face or shot. It, it's the world hasn't lost anything if either of those happen. So, in any event, <laughs> Alec Burrow Games says James will be using martial arts against the ghost. Probably not. Wouldn't that be fun though? Wouldn't it be like? Wouldn't you want to fight a ghost? Like I, I've just always thought like. Like, you know, because if a ghost can make sounds and knock things off desks and stuff like that, that means they can take physical form. It'd be fun to fight a ghost once or twice. So, um, <laughs> Bob Coon says, yes, yes, start with my kitchen. <laughs> um, Darren Jackson says, get permission first. That's the thing. I really, a lot of these buildings, they're on abandoned property. Like, whenever you send, like, a request to the address that's the property record, like, nothing comes back. It's, it's not real people. Um, so I, I don't know, uh, you know, how to, how, how to do that. So, um, some places we will get permission. Other places I'm just going to go. So, you know, old. fucking when you're, when, <laughs> when you're 20 miles out in Egypt, North Carolina, right? The sheriff is drunk at the bar at noon. Okay. It's going to take him two hours to get there anyway. So... Uh, somebody says Revbone450 says, do you usually give discounts to women's shelters or churches? No. Okay, no. The churches enjoy tax-free status. They can pay me for my work. Okay? I'm not a member there. Not giving a discount to a church. Women's shelters? I mean, no. They get government funding in most cases. They get help. There's, there's plenty of tax dollars there. Uh, especially the women's shelters around here. Um, so yeah, no, I don't really give discounts to anybody. What I do is approach it from a completely different standpoint. I don't give the discount. If there's a discount that's going to get given, it's going to get given by my employees. They're going to show up on site and they're going to see something and they're going to make the decision that this pump is free or this pump is half price or something like that. Um, and I don't have a problem with them abusing it. They don't even have to call me, okay? Um, if they see that something's needed, like like say 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 we fuck up, okay? Say we made a huge mistake and wronged the customer, okay? Uh, give them the pump for free, okay? Like don't don't argue over money. Or you show up and the kids barefoot wearing clothes that are three sizes too small, and the floors in their house are falling in, and the lady goes to get the money and it's a whole bunch of ones that she got from like waiting tables and it comes out of the envelope labeled rent money. Yeah, it's probably time to do the septic pump for free. And my guys are trained on that. They, they know how to handle that. So, um, uh, yeah, I don't do discounts. I, I, I don't do discounts for categories of people. It's like doing discounts for like nurses. Do you know how much money nurses make? They make a lot of money. I've got a nurse friend that's banging back $60 an hour. Why am I giving a discount to them? Or doctors or like healthcare workers. Here's I'm going to give a discount to a surgeon? Like a, like a, no. Pay double. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just did a video on that on TikTok and it tanked. It absolutely tanked. Lowest views I've had ever was talking about, um, a, a increased price for people that were difficult. It's very weird. Um, so, <laughs> Scott Buchholz says charity begins at home and they don't live with me. No, it's, 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 it's like this, right? Like, I, I don't have a problem with discounts, but it's like, which groups do you give a discount to and which groups do you not? Okay. And at what point does it become discrimination? Okay. So, like, would I like to give a military discount? Yes. There's like a million people in the military, okay? And then like, should I give a discount to teachers? Sure. That's a good group of people. I mean, they make all right money. Well, if I'm giving a discount to teachers, do, do, do I do it for bus drivers? And then like, what about the administration at the school? Like, do they deserve a discount? Because they make the school happen. What about her, like people that work at hospitals? Well, like every doctor, nurse, EMT, paramedic. What about the firefighters and the and the and the cops and the you know like the sheriff's department? 
well, they're all really great people and they deserve discounts. And then, and then it's like, well, like, what about other septic companies? Like, do they deserve a discount? Or like, what if I get a phone call from a plumber? Like, or what if it's somebody I know? Basically, the list of the number of people that you give discounts to is so huge. Just set that as your price. Like, just be price competitive. So at the end of the day, there's no discount unless the employee gives it to them based on situations that they see on the job site. Ah, <sighs> in any event, let's see, what else? You guys have any questions? I tried to copy that book and I let everyone away. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, is there's, there's, there's a lot of people out there that, that have a problem with cops. And listen, I've met my fair share of cops that I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, seriously, one of my first, like, serious interactions with, with a cop whenever I was a young adult. Um, uh, <laughs> talking about discounts, somebody just put in the comments, free to people 99 years old, but only with permission from their parents, <laughs> okay? Somewhere somebody's going to take you up on that, okay? Um, <laughs> that's going on the website right now. But uh, one of my first interactions with law enforcement as like an adult is I was a pizza delivery guy for Domino's Pizza, which, oh my God, I loved their pizza at one time. In any event, I'm out doing the pizza delivery thing and I, I'm driving this old piece of shit Fiero, okay? Uh, one of the headlights doesn't work. It's, it's loud. It's, got, it's blowing oil out the exhaust. And I get pulled over outside the projects because I just delivered a pizza to the projects because I was, I was the only one that was willing to go into the projects because nobody's going to rob me and my piece of shit Fiero that leaves a synthetic cloud behind it, right? Like, I'm a global warming factory in that car, okay? And coming out of the projects, you know, with the Domino's pizza thing on the top of the truck, I get pulled over by three officers, all right? And the bullshit thing that they tell me is that they've pulled me over for suspicion of no insurance, I, I said, I have insurance. You know I have insurance because I work for Domino's Pizza. Domino's Pizza verifies our insurance. You can check the computer. You, you, you know that I have insurance. And while the guy's talking to me over by his car, okay, without saying a word, there's two officers searching my vehicle. Now, they never ask permission, okay? So I'm like, are they supposed to be searching my vehicle, which was like a dumb thing. Like I was young. I didn't know better. I should have said, stop searching my vehicle, but they're over there searching my vehicle. And I turn around, I'm like, are they supposed to be searching my vehicle? And he goes, uh, the laws have changed and we're allowed to search anywhere in your vehicle. That's in the lunge space. And I'm like, that kind of defeats the whole like constitutional protections. But like I was young, right? Like it was my first interaction with the cops. There were three of them, one of me, Whatever. So I went down after this and I filed a complaint with the police department because I felt like that, one, that the traffic stop was bullshit because you have a computer, you know I have insurance. Telling me that you pulled me over on suspicion of no insurance and then doing an illegal search of my vehicle, I felt like as an uneducated person that that was a violation of policy. And um, so... Uh, somebody says, do I have kids and how many? Yes, I have kids. There are two. They are twins. They are about 19 right now. Um, in any event, I go down, I file a complaint. Wouldn't you know it, strange thing, I got pulled over over 30 times that following month. Not just by those officers, but by every officer in that precinct. Like every time it was a new officer was pulling me over. New officer pulling me over every day. Sometimes I get pulled over twice a day. And I'm like, like, dude, like, I get it, okay? I won't complain about the cops anymore. We're fine, right? And that ends, and about three months later, I'm in college, and I'm driving down 240 in Asheville, and I'm driving like a... <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm driving down two, two, 240 in Asheville, and it is piss poor in the rain. It is just raining cats and dogs, like sheeting action, okay? That's what your dishes get in the dishwasher. And I got pulled over. And I'm like, 
what nutso cop is going to pull me over in this weather? And so I pull over for one officer. They do a felony traffic stop. I get drug out of the car, put face down on the ground, which has like half an inch of rain on it on the side of the interstate. Okay. Mist from trucks going everywhere. I'm freaking saturated. They pull everything out of my car, which at that point, the only thing I cared about was my college textbooks, which are now in my backpack. My backpack gets dumped in the grass at the side of the road while I'm face down on the pavement. And they go through my car head to toe. I look back, like I'm handcuffed on the ground. I kind of look back. There's like two or three DMV officers, like four APD vehicles, two state troopers, a couple of sheriffs. And I'm like, holy fuck, what did I do? Okay. Which was nothing. Completely tore my car apart. Did not find what they were looking for. So they get me up off the ground. Obviously, I'm going to be late for school. Obviously, my clothes are trash, you know. And they unhandcuff me and tell me, sorry, we were looking for somebody with a similar description. Now, at the time, I'm driving this piece of shit Fiero with one headlight that doesn't work. Like, the headlights, like, raise up and go down, and, like, one's up and one's down because the motor's broke on it, right? Like, what do you mean mistaken description? There's... There's nobody else drives a big a piece of shit as I do, okay? So, like, that set the stage of my adult life, like, with police interactions. But here's the thing that I've come to realize, which is there's a lot of misunderstandings, and the majority, the vast majority of police officers really, really fucking care. They really do. I went on a ride along with a police officer. They have like a community um, and uh, they have like a community program where an average everyday citizen can go ride with a police officer, okay? And see their like day-to-day thing, right? So I choose to have a night shift because I'd like to not be bored, okay? And we go to this, uh, participate in this chase. Uh, It's for a stolen vehicle. The guy stole the vehicle, uh, runs from the cops, uh, drives to the hill below the projects, jumps out of the car and takes off into the woods. And the officer that was chasing him and was right behind him said he had a gun. So now everybody's like on freaking high alert. Right. And I'm standing there and they're, you know, cordoning off and they got the road blocked and all this other stuff. And I get out of the car and the officer that I'm riding with, he says, listen, the guy has a gun. Would you like a bulletproof vest? I said, no, I'm probably fine. Okay. Like, first off, (laughs) you haven't caught him. All right. So my danger being shot is pretty freaking low. Right. Second off, I'm not wearing your uniform. So, um, and it's not like I haven't been shot at before. It's, it's, it's not something that gets my blood up, right? So I'm like, no, I think I'm fine. So we get out and I'm following this officer around, which the rule is stay with him. Don't wander off, stay with him. Every single officer that I walked past at that scene where they're trying to establish like a perimeter and, you know, trap this guy in the woods, Right. Every single officer that I walk past looks at me and goes, you're a ride along? Yes. Would you like some body armor? No, I think I'll be fine. Every single one. Now, here's the deal, right? They're looking for a bad guy. And their concern in the middle of potentially being shot because they're wearing the police uniform, so they are a target, and this guy's running from them, they stop doing their job to check on me. Hey, man, can we make you safer? Every single officer I ran into did that. So I just got a hard time believing that cops are bad because these guys on this whole thing were like really concerned with public safety, my safety, their safety. We even pulled a guy over on the side of the road and the officer gets out of his vehicle, walks up the car and says, hey, listen, we're on the side of a busy road. How about if you go pull into that McDonald's right there and we'll take care of this in a parking lot where it's a little bit safer. And the lady that he pulled over got pissed. And I'm like, yeah, he's trying to be nice. You know, he's trying to look out for you. Like, so I'm not saying there's not bad cops out there. There are. Okay. And I think I got introduced to like 30 of them when I filed a complaint whenever I was like 25. Right. But the vast majority of them 
are decent. So... <laughs> Somebody says, right now is the perfect opportunity to shave your eyebrows off for our entertainment. Not happening. In case you haven't gathered, I like my facial hair. So, you know, and the thing is, is I've got to like my facial hair because I'm losing this, okay? So I'm getting some real estate up here. I've got to make up for it down here, right? So... Uh, Scott Buchholz says, yeah, if you think about it in that situation, you're a distraction. Um, yeah, I am. Like, me being there also puts the officers at risk. Now, imagine this, right? Like, the cops are there to catch the bad guys. They're not really there to entertain dumb schmucks from the public that want to do a ride-along. So imagine if I'm the dumb schmuck that gets caught, right? They got to take care of me, which is distracting them from doing the, the, the bigger job of, like, taking care of the public and catching bad guys. So, you know, while, while the ride along was fun, I did realize that it was a distraction of those officers and, you know, but it is good. Um, so, uh, somebody says, do you have a favorite movie? Like, w listen, John Wick. Okay. Like, like you got to understand like John Wick. Okay. Um, uh, Somebody says, what is the most horrific job that I've ever been to? I mean, I'll tell that story. It, it wasn't a septic job. Um, actually, I'll segue that into a news and current events thing. Guys, you know SVB Bank failed, right? You know Signature Bank failed. You know that there's been like 20 regional banks that have failed. Uh, things are falling apart. Well, locally here where we live in Canton, North Carolina, which is like 25 minutes from where I live, there's this paper mill, Okay. Now, this paper mill has been here for over 100 years. It's like a staple of the community. The town of Canton would dry up and blow away if it wasn't for this paper mill. And they just announced that this paper mill is going to be closing. Now, one of the worst jobs, no, the worst job that I've ever had in my entire life was at that paper mill. I worked for a company called NEO, which was a subcontractor, NEO Group. And uh, they are, they're a hazmat cleanup group. And when there wasn't hazmat work, we would go and change the insulation on the boilers, okay? And that was a horrible, horrible job because you're climbing into a building, working on scaffolding around an insulated boiler. So the room is already like 100 whatever. I'm not going to make up a number. I don't remember, but it's, it's fucking hot, okay? It's so hot that when you spend... But, you have to work for 15 minutes, okay? And then you come out for 45. You get paid for the full hour. And when you come out of the boiler room and it's 95 degrees outside, you're freezing, okay? 95 degrees after you've been in the boiler is like you're shivering. Like we're all shivering. We bring coats, okay? It's, it, it was a horrible job. I would come home and just take a shower in black, you know, soot and everything would just run off of me. It was the worst job you could imagine, okay? Kind of like, wow, I need to go back to school kind of job, okay? But this, I I worked at this paper mill and I did that and I quit as fast as I could, but fuck, I needed a job, right? Worst job I've ever had. This paper mill is now closing. That means that 1,600 employees just got told, uh fuck off. There's, there's no money. Okay. Like, how are you going to pay your mortgage? They got people that have worked at this paper mill for generations. People that work at the paper mill that don't have any other skills. Okay. Now I get that the paper mill smells awful, but you want your toilet paper, right? Like you would be able to wipe your ass. Like that is something you want to be able to do. So the paper mill is a necessary evil. So in any event, um, the paper mill's closing. Not only are the 1,600 uh, workers going to be out of work, but Champion Credit Union, the bank that services the paper mill, they're probably going under. The trucking companies that service that, I mean, hundreds of truckers out of work, okay? The rail, out of work. The local gas company is shutting down. I think they're like the third largest user of natural gas. Gas company shutting it down. Like... This entire thing 
is just devastating to the economy. There's a trucking company in Rutherford just shut their doors. Over 100 trucks. Pfft, we're done. Okay? The number of people that are losing their jobs right now. And this is just... This is just like in Western North Carolina. Having, like, our job market cannot support having 5, 10, 15,000 people hit the streets and need a job. So, um, you know, it, it's whenever you ask about, like, the worst job I ever had, I always considered the paper mill the worst job that I, that I ever had, right? But that paper mill gave life to so many people that, I mean, looking back on it, um, I don't know. Maybe that job was a necessary job. What's up? So, in any event, um, <laughs> somebody says, go woke, go broke. I mean, probably. Um, somebody says they used to work for Briggs & Stratton in Murray, Kentucky. When they announced the layoffs... There was 600 people suddenly out of a job from multiple surrounding counties. Yeah, it's rough. And here's the thing, right? Like if you're looking for cheap real estate, probably get it now in Canton, North Carolina because these people have to sell. They don't have a choice. They're not going to be able to make their mortgage payment, okay? But when the paper mill shuts down, the smell's going to go away, which means that the prices are going to go up because right now the prices are depressed because it smells bad. So the people there are going to get screwed twice, Right? They're going to get screwed because their property values are going to be low whenever they sell. But the speculators that are going to come in and buy their stuff, they're going to make out. Okay? This is, a, this is another example. The rich guy is going to get richer and the poor guy is going to get poorer. And uh, it, is, it is what it is. So, um, Well, guys, I have been on here for probably about an hour. And to be completely honest with you, I am, I am exhausted. I'm tired. I completed my math homework today for the first time early. Um, so I'm probably going to call it quits and go to sleep. Um, and in the words of Bob uh, Ben Wishart, the poor get screwed more than twice. Yes, that is, that is absolutely correct. So in any event, you guys have an absolutely wonderful day. I'm going to go get some sleep. Um, and... I do hope to do these more often, but every time I say that, I get distracted by something. So uh, I'll see you guys around and show up for these lives. Talk to y'all later.